evolutionary computation is a local search technique based on an abstraction of biological evolution. Candidate solutions to a problem represent individuals in a population. These candidate solutions could be bit strings, arrays of numbers, neural networks, or computer programs represented in some form such as trees or sequences of commands. Consider a population of neural networks. This is a very small population, but it will allow me to make my point. Assume these networks were used in either an, a reinforcement learning agent to control the agent, or as a classifier, or in some other task. In any case, you would be able to assess how well each one performs by getting some sort of score. In the case of a reinforcement learning agent, it would be the long-term return. And for a classifier, it would be the classification accuracy. In any case, you would be able to take each of these individuals and apply to it a fitness function. This is a mapping from candidate solutions to numbers that you will usually want to maximize. Assume we evaluate each of these agents and the fitness function values are the following. Clearly, these two neural networks have better scores than the rest. However, what if I told you the best score you could get was 100? That would mean that even the best isn't that great. However, if we keep making small changes to the best network, we can presumably make it better. A small change in an evolutionary algorithm is known as a mutation. The right sequence of mutations applied to the right individuals in the population should be able to lead to very high performing individuals. In the case of neural networks, this could be as simple as tweaking one of the synaptic weights, or it could be something more complex, which we'll see in a future video. The way we choose which individual to mutate is via selection, which is an abstraction of natural selection. Essentially, we favor individuals with higher scores, and we create new offspring individuals by mutating them. Notice that these two individuals each have two offspring. This individual has one offspring, and these individuals have no offspring. In practice, this process is usually slightly random. This means that we favor the best individuals, although don't necessarily only take the best individuals. This is why in this case, the individual with the low fitness of five still had one offspring. If we then evaluate this new population, let's say we get the following values. This value is better. This value is also better than that of its parent, but not better than something we had previously seen in the population. This value did not move up, and this one actually went down. Because mutations are random, it's always possible that we could go down rather than up in fitness. However, if we have a large enough population and we have enough mutations occurring, then it is highly likely that some of them will lead to higher fitness. In some cases, we can simply repeat this process over and over again and get higher and higher fitness scores. But it is also possible that the search process could encounter local optima or plateaus that impede progress. For example, what if the next generation of offspring didn't get better fitness values, like so? Now, we don't know why this algorithm is no longer making progress. We don't know what the shape of the search space is. But there are operations in addition to mutation that can help us make progress if this is, for example, a local optima, or this is, for example, a plateau. And that operation is crossover. Crossover mimics the biological process of sexual reproduction. It involves taking usually two, but sometimes more, solutions from the population 
and combining them to get a new individual. Generally, crossover and mutation occur in the population. Some percentage of the parents get crossed over with each other to create offspring, which are then mutated. But we will also have some individuals which are only mutated. These are mutated clones that reproduce asexually. Let's assume that the following individuals are crossed over. In this example, NN11 was crossed over with NN14 to give birth to NN16, which will also be mutated. NN13 was crossed over with NN15 to give birth to NN19. NN17, 18, and 20 are the result of asexual reproduction and are only mutated, not crossed over. Here are the resulting fitness values. You can see here that this individual has the highest fitness in this very small population. Its fitness is 45. This is somewhat unexpected since its parents were not the individuals that had the highest fitness values. That's because crossover can go through the search space in unexpected ways. This is a benefit, but it can cause some confusion. This individual had a clone offspring with the same fitness value. Presumably it's stuck in some sort of local optima. Meanwhile, the crossing over of this very high scoring individual and this fairly high scoring individual produced an individual with a low fitness score. And even this neural network through asexual reproduction and mutation alone resulted in a very poor scoring individual. There is a lot of randomness here, but given a big enough population and enough opportunities to create new offspring, we will find good individuals and those that are the best will gradually rise to the top through this simulated process of selection.